Because I suppose, because when you say anitya, world is it non non stable. Okay, it's a little confusing because I can say no no world is real. I can see all of you. I can feel this. I feel my body, <coughs> and I get confused. <coughs> so instead, Shankaracharya chose the word mithya. Right? Mithya means even though there is a reality outside, it doesn't have any substantiveness in it. It is non-substantial reality. It is not a reality we can go to the bank with and know that no matter what, it is going to pay. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Nothing. There is nothing in the world, be it the father's love, the anything, our youth, our beauty, our richness, and even our intelligence, because all will come to pass and fade and change over time, trauma, and situation. Do you all agree, or am I manufacturing it? Has anybody of you experienced any stability that you can take to the bank of this world? No. The only the only solace was back within, back within, back within. And somewhere there was something that was eternally watching all of this. That was there when we were four, that was there when we are 20, that was there when we had fallen down, that was there when we were being applauded. Do you agree? And that remains at a deeper level, unchanged. So Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya. And so he didn't say... He used this word mithya. Mithya means it is apparently there, but it shall change. It shall move. So the wise men started performing viveka. The wise one continued in their daily life, but they did not invest their last dollar of belief, hope, faith in the world of mithya. Are you understanding? And so the person's paradigm or anchoring of how they take decisions, what choices they make, what relationships they choose to live in, what they give, how much they give and how much they want. All of this is now based on truth and not on this mithya. You understand? Okay. And then, so the first is Viveka. From only one who has this constant practice, constant practice of discrimination, will have Vairagya, which is detachment. Because... When one becomes intellectually convinced that this is Mithya and Brahm is something separate which has to be discovered, which is not found in this changing, um, uh, you know, seductive and at times ghastly, right? That's a word, yeah? Mithya. So it can be from seductive and appetizing to gory and ghastly. That is Mithya, right? And we go around lamenting and getting involved in it and, you know, talk, talk, talk about it, whine, whine, whine about it, email, email, email about it, blog, blog, blog about it. Now we're stuck there and when we find our guru, we literally burn their ear by telling about our mithya. What is there? Just mithya, 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 more mithya, more mithya. But at some point when we become really serious, we really take this one lecture to heart and say, okay, what's mithya? And it even comes down to the body. It is changing. To the prana, it is changing. To the thoughts, they are changing. To the intellect, it is changing. To the karma, it is changing. And then we realize there is no anchor. There is nothing I have to sit around and lament for. Uh, to begin with, this is mithya. And so the paradigm starts changing. And at that time, detachment. Detachment from many things start occurring. One Where one was obsessed with that one little mole, I had a patient, she was 50 year old, she looked like Barbie doll. Have you seen Barbie doll <laughs> with that ponytail? <laughs> She's 50. She had perfectly sculpted body and um, she had of course plastic in the right places. <laughs> and she used to wear very tight uh, leotards, okay, no problem in all of that. Everything is all good Barbie doll, no problem. She was even my friend, kind of. <laughs> she befriended. <laughs> However, she had one mole, one thing in her cheek resurfacing, she got a scar. You understand cheek resurface? Mm -hmm. They pulled her cheek, you know. So in that she got a scar and that scar had clay for the third years because all the time she ate was pizza and... No, she ate cheese ball, cheese, cut cheese, protein, you know, stay healthy. Cheese and fish, 
So, and yogurt. So you can imagine. Why will that scar heal, right? It's not going to heal according to Ayurveda. So it would turn red and blue and black. So at midnight, she would call me to cry on her scar. When her boyfriend left her, it was because of the scar. When her business didn't take place, it was because of the scar. Eh, her whole life was a misery. And I knew her many years ago. Then I went off to India and I came back and something, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. I heard about her. Yeah, her name was, I don't want to take the name. Nowadays people subscribe to our YouTube channel. Anyway, so, <laughs> so I told that other person, I said, yes, I'm back from India. And if she wants to call me, you can let her know my number. She called me after 12 years and she asked me if Ayurveda had any solution for the scar and she was still miserable. I wanted to tell her about how I don't brush my hair but I feel glorious. <laughs> I wanted to tell her about how I don't buy any new clothes but I feel like I have a new clothing every day. I wanted to tell her it's not great to not brush your hair and please don't follow these uh, decrepitude <laughs> values of mine. <laughs> However, I do brush them on important events. <laughs> You've seen that. You've seen that. I brush my hair. You know it's an important day for Vedika. <laughs> All of you know that. So you, I don't let you down there. However, 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 my, my, my balding spots or my breaking hair, or my worn clothes are not going to take away my bliss from me. Are you understanding? Nor will my relationships as they come and go. My darling, my darling son-like pet is in his last days. And yet I continue. I cry, but I continue. I continue. As I have given all of you so days. I mean, look, Ambika's cat, just one day, gone. Vimla's cat, gone. So my students, they shed and they move on. They have also taught me how to deal with death. Not just I have taught them. So there is some anchoring that goes inside. And so this is called detachment. Vairagya. And one person, after they have done Brahma Satyam Jagat Mithya, the world is changeable and non-substantial. Brahma is something that I have to now find. Where is Brahma? This world, it is not. Okay. World is, but it is a convoluted form of it. So where I need to find that. Once that starts happening, there is a natural, I'm going to use the word, repulsion. You know what it means? Repulsion. So when very sticky, sneaky, uh, overly sweet kind of people approach me, I go, oh, what entangles are you going to put me into? When people offer a lot of money and, uh oh, please stop alluring me. I know your, your jiva is very, <laughs> it needs some Vedanta, you know. <laughs> so it's like, step away, keep me clean, you know. When overly buffets of life and world tempt you, you step away. You go, oh, oh just to look at it. I Where's my kichuri? You understand? Where is the khichdi of my life? It's not just the khichdi of what you eat, but it's like, can I have simple sattvic meal that I can digest and just move on with life? You are, are you following? There is a small repulsion, but, uh, and it's not that, that, that repulsion where when you're socked on the face, then you have a repulsion. But then right after that blue and black is gone, you go right back to be socked again. That's called temporary repulsion because you did not get the kiss of life. You got the bite of life. That's not repulsion. That is called shamshan vairagya. You know, many people, they go to the death, of, what is it called where you bury people? Funeral. funeral. They go to a funeral. At that time, they feel a lot of vairagya. They feel a lot of viveka and vairagya. But the moment they get in the car, they say to each other, that was an intense funeral. Shall we go to McDonald's? <laughs> it's over. Are you understanding? So when they are broken and jilted, that time they come. Oh, no, I must plug into satsang. But in the satsang itself, they may find somebody to get attracted to and off starts another life. 
दैट इज नॉट वैराग्य सो वैराग्य इज प्लेस्ड अपॉन विवेक सॉलिड इंटेलेक्चुअल एक्टिविटी ऑफ कॉन्स्टेंटली लिसनिंग टू द टीचर एंड द ग्रंथ एंड कॉन्स्टेंटली सेइंग व्हाट इज ब्रह्म व्हाट इज मिथ्या आई यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग फ्रॉम देयर इट सेल्फ द attractions will subside some kind of repulsion will occur one one starts saying i want the truth i want the truth i want something i want to take to bank i want it i have been told it's not there it's my personal experience it's not there but i want it that is called vairagya it leads to vairagya after vairagya only the shat sampatti the six virtues are possible what are those virtues those virtues are फर्स्ट वन इज शांति और क्षमा शांति मीन्स माइंड बिकम्स अ लिटिल मोर फोकस्ड शांति डजेंट मीन एब्सोलूट शांति हियर बट हियर माइंड मीन्स दैट इट स्टार्ट स्टेइंग अ लिटिल बिट गोल ओरिएंटेड सम सम डिस्टर्शंस विल कम बट इट कीप्स गोइंग बैक टू द गोल एंड द गोल इज आई एम इन द सर्च फॉर ब्रह्म आई डोंट वॉन्ट मिथ्या दैट इज द गोल दैट इज द गोल so problems come but the mind keeps being a little more calm only the mind not they again lead to one and to another only one when the preceding is met the second is there so you have to see what you need many of us we are still this whole book is about how to develop viveka and it will lead to the rest from viveka vairagya you got this part from vairagya only when one has stepped away from the allurements and the confusions and not buying it whole soul one is living in it but one has not been colored by it completely only then one can afford to have the first quality which is the quality related to the mind which is called shama or shanti only when the mind is relatively more focused can there be danti or dama which means the controlling of the bahya senses or the indriyas so if i if we have a habit of uh, talking if we have a habit of just the moment we lose our temper we pick up something and slap it or toss a cup or break things like right? using the physical senses are you understanding physical senses cannot be controlled until their boss the mind is a little peaceful you can't just like put a rope and put your hand there it this has to be a mental anchor to pull it back saying i will not move it so spiritual seekers are known to like stay for days in silence they are known to like you know um be less you know be less using of their senses they are in the state of dhamma so actually uh, shanti leads to danti and from or shama dhamma and then from danti we have a state of withdrawal which is called uparati in uparati mind and senses are withdrawn when you meet such a person they will not be spilling everywhere their mind would be a little more peaceful and their senses would be a little contained are you understanding and from a person who is in a state of uparati we can tell that this person has control over senses control over mind where are they you can see the preceding steps are you following and so in every situation even if somebody is yelling at them they would be performing some kind of withdrawal so there would be somebody tempting them to fight and they would be in some state of they may speak speak something but there will be a general withdrawal where withdrawal not a cold withdrawal i am not talking to you i am being cold no no there the mind is fully involved in being cold there is no shanti no danti but there is a withdrawal to the source within to this knowledge to this quest brahma satyam jagan mithya in this changing world now i am being deal i am now shoes are being thrown at me brahma satyam where what is the truth what is this changeable reality so then you have uparati only one who is a little withdrawn what from engaging in the world in a peaceful contained way that person can develop titiksha or endurance of sukha dukha then if difficulties come cold comes hot comes they will not be lamenting the first sign of a spiritual seeker is come difficulty they lament 
of a not ready seeker and the first sign of a more qualified seeker is lamenting reduces or becomes like a report and a realistic solution are you understanding but this lamenting and i have noticed that in the average human villages be it america or india the basic conversation is lament mm. have you seen that especially if you overhear conversations you know oh then i said oh i don't care and then i said you want to hear it or you want to get out you want to get out then i toss my shoe and man when i toss my shoe da 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 lament lament then the other person waits till they can jump in and they can lament oh hear my story and lament but the spiritual seeker in titiksha starts lam starts reducing their lament they may say something like i have this situation and i'm working on it but there is not this whining you follow and after the tiksha only after the tiksha can we develop the state of uh, uh, what's the next one manju ji what's the next one uparati tiksha ha shraddha now shraddha Uh, is uh, uh, i have also translated it as faith in scripture faith in guru but if you really want to understand the purport of the word shraddha and then we'll go into each shloka or <laughs> coming back to school but shraddha also means ability to embrace the knowledge it's an ability and it's hidden inside but if we don't have titiksha we are busy lamenting if we don't have any withdrawal from the world if we don't have any vivek vairagya we will have inability to embrace the knowledge so guru may come and go scriptures may be put in front of our eyes scanned and sent to us broadcasted over microphone put into our uh, you know what is it itunes do what it takes but there is lack of inability to embrace the knowledge when one is embracing the knowledge this person exhibits a tender innocent openness to the knowledge there is a sweet reception taking place from the teacher or from the source of the knowledge to the person this doesn't mean slavery to the teacher no where does it say that shraddha has nothing to do with what is outside which is the teacher teacher is part of mithya do you now see please see advaita vedanta doesn't say everything is mithya but garland your guru guru has a special status only because it is that part of mithya which is a door <laughs> if we are lucky to encounter the right guru and if we are karmically meant to be caught up in like just some version of a guru then we don't know but 99% chances are if we are very sincere only the sincere guru will gradually stay sometimes sincere guru will be there with insincere shishya in fact the atarya upanishad is developed between one teacher scolding the student and asking that student to vomit out the knowledge he gave and when the knowledge was vomited out the other students transformed into birds to pick on that knowledge taita remains the um, birds partridges so shraddha that the one who has the, among the six virtues mind is peaceful senses are therefore controlled person is somewhat having withdrawn withdrawn doesn't mean cold and pale and pathetic but withdrawn to a deeper reality and therefore has endurance and so therefore has ability to embrace and engage with the knowledge and the sources of the knowledge which is the grantha and the guru and after shraddha one starts developing samadhan a final virtue in which one is going through the world being a mom dad uh, boss leader teacher banker but one is more or less in a state of suspended and complete trust and belief 
in the same original teaching, Brahma Satyam Jagannamitya. So therefore, when you know one is one is in a different, completely counterintuitive belief system, because the ordinary belief system is that <laughs> Jagat Satyam, world is a reality, spirit doesn't exist, Brahma Mithya. It's hokey pokey nonsense. Are you understanding? So one goes and, and that is called Samadhana. In Samadhana, one is somewhat peaceful. So the qualified aspirant comes in front of the teacher relatively peaceful. If we go backwards, is there is a continued receptivity, peacefulness, intelligence, openness. Because Samadhan state is what is the teacher sees of a good qualified, because they already have Shraddha in them. If you go back, they have endurance power. Even if they were coming on the way and the car broke down, they won't come and sit here and only talk about the car breakdown. They will consider it as a peace and move on to study. Are you for understanding? And so there would be Titiksha. Titiksha is endurance. Because of uparati, withdrawal, because of sense control, dhamma or dati, because of mind control, shama or shanti, because of vairagya, some detachment from what is external to what is an attachment to what is inward. Why? Because of viveka. Why was this viveka there? Because I went to, because of my certain karma. Shankara Acharya talked about it in his second shloka itself that I am very fortunate to have human birth. I am fortunate to have a teacher. I am fortunate to find a way out of this quagmire of repeated birth, death and suffering. And finally, the fourth quality is the person who has samadhan will ultimately start developing a major question and that major question is called moksha. The person will call the mumukshu. Can you say it? Mumukshu. <laughs> and the mumukshu is the one who will experience their own self, their Atman, Brahman, their Jiva will get more and more purified. There is nothing to do, be or become. There is no God to please or fear. There is no nothing but the great self reflected in all and all creatures, all beings. And then this world of Mithya will show itself. The whole plan, the whole game becomes revealed. And at that time, the indwelling Atman is one with Brahman. And there is a whole change system. But even in the whole process, there is more and more empowerment. There is more and more freedom. There is more and more mastery. And there is more and more quality, time in timelessness spent on earth, which is nothing but a construct of Mithya. Am I clear? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the remaining two minutes. And just to conclude, uh, I'm not going to talk about moksha today. I've completed the six qualities, I think, many times now. Mm -hmm. So next time, maybe, uh, very you can work with Vedehi to create a small list of just the qualities. Mm -hmm. Small so to give out one page and then always have it because mm -hmm. these are all we are all, me included, mm -hmm. we are all sadhaks and we would like to have these qualities. Would you like that? Mm -hmm. To be on the tip and see where we are at. And we are often at many places, mm -hmm. you know, at the same time. So we want to mm -hmm. finalize them. Sometimes when I'm running to go to Vedika, like on Tuesday, I was coming here, I had just come from a class I had taught three hours away, and then the plumber came to our house, and then the water tap leaked, and the, there was water in the kitchen everywhere. <laughs> At that time, only Titiksha, endurance, can help us stay calm and not lose, you know, ourself. So, you know, these, these, these tips we apply in our day-to-day -day life. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. I'll just go over these uh, shlokas and just say the meaning. So, shloka number 20. I'd rather begin it uh, once again with shloka uh, 19. Adha ho nitya nitya vastu vivekaha parigarnyate ya mutra bhala bhova viragasta dhanantaram 
ಹಾಪನ್ it just all lots of mithya you know some people become live bombs you know living bombs because when they die in heaven they will achieve this and achieve that <coughs> martyrhood it's still all mithya you know to do it for this world or that world because we are not here in the now then it is clear that following this are there there will be six virtues commencing with shama and uh, lastly ending with moksha that we are going to study shloka 20 the most important shloka brahma satyam jagan mithye tevam rupo vinishchah soyam nitya nitya vastu vivekah samuda hritah samuda hritah the firm understanding that brahman is the reality and that the material world jagat is mithya is spoken of as viveka between the eternal and the transient this is called nitya nitya vastu viveka so this is defining viveka the next shloka 21 defines vairagya tadha vairagyam jagupsaya darshanam shavanadibih dehadi brahma paryante ya nitye bhogavastuni vairagya or detachment is revulsion revulsion from all things seen heard like from this world now this revulsion don't don't think of the world like yeah, not like that and don't behave like that oh, i am repulsed mm-hmm. that's not what i'm teaching it's an inherent stepping away it is an inherent stepping away i'll give you an example when i was young and i would fall in love all the time okay, okay. okay. excuse me yes. <laughs> not all the time but significant times enough to not fall in love now and try to be love so there is a and then every time you okay maybe that's not a good example because it's a long one but say you burn you burn your hand with fire have you done that mm-hmm. played with matchsticks and you burn them right after a while if somebody says hey want to put a fit put a hand in you will have a repulsion no no do you agree mm-hmm. do you agree mm-hmm. so when similarly there are some people who have had you know these uh, worldly situations of food and love and lust and ambition and profession and and manipulation and trying to be this you know this power monger in the form of a guru or a ceo or da 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 x y z and it all came to nothing but pathetic fall humiliation and loneliness do you agree and if one has seen that then at some point somebody says oh come come we will put you on the throne the person will have a repulsion please leave me alone i have to go to my satsang thank you very much mm-hmm. are you understanding so one has this stepping away rather than getting <laughs> engaged in the whirlpools of mithya okay so that is the second one shloka now 22 it talks about um, shama virajya vishaya vrata dosha dishtaya mohurmah so lakshaye niyata avastha manasa shama uchyate so mohan moh again and again how is shanti received not by just taking a morning baba shloka and saying i'll be peaceful no mohan moh again and again when the mind goes running this is very important we have to bring it back to what matters what is substantial which is the reality of atman brahman and not this world are you understanding things are exploding falling breaking even this you know what is that storm sandy if we want we can watch television all day and lament 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 on the human destiny or we can say let me write a check do what i can say a few gayatris and done i'm not going to just fall apart i've had people who fall apart because there is war uh, there is this happening that happening are baba i already 30000 people are losing their vitality why are you losing your vitality are you understanding so Uh, detaching the mind from many false sense pleasures again and again and by perceiving their pernicious character do you understand pernicious 
I didn't, but it's good. <laughs> Resting it permanently on one's objective, which is the Brahma, it is said to be Shama mind control. Are you following? So even if the child is crying and we feel like slapping the child, we have to say, Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya, you know, this is part of the Mithya, it is happening. Let me focus on the eternal spirit which allows me to have this experience. Similarly, I want to hold on to my good looking, you know, Saya to say, Oh my God, you look so beautiful and handsome and bright and can I keep you for 10 more days? No, this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. Are you following? Okay. Then the next one is uh, Dhamma or Danti, which is explained. Vishayebhya paravartaye stapanam swasa swaswa golake ubaye sham indriyanam sadamaha parikirtita. The retention of both kinds of senses in their respective orbs, withdrawing them from their sense objects, is spoken as dhamma. Bhaya nalambanam vritte resho pari paratiruttama. The preeminent uparati, we are talking about uparati now in Shloka 24, is a non dependence of the mind on anything external. Now, just like I want to give the example of uparati, I just remembered that if, uh, if water is kept in a tank, okay, and you open its various channels, then this water will gush out, okay, there are 10 channels, it will gush out and it will make its way and it will lie all over the field and create patterns within that field based on the grooves it can make. It will take on the, some will form in a round receptacle, water will become round. Some will fall in a narrow bottle, it will become narrow. Some will fall through a very fine channel, it will become that. Do you agree? Water will take on the form of the receptacle it is contained in. Such is our mind. As it is allowed to flow out, it just takes on the mind of the world in which it lives in. Please understand. So, uparati means not allowing the mind to be designed and designated by the outside vessels. It's a very serious point, uparati, here. Think about it. That I let my mind flow out. And if I see war, it becomes full of war. If I see gossip, it becomes full of gossip. If I not just see, I identify with it. If I identify lust, it becomes full of lust. Please see. And if I see Brahman everywhere, it's a special kind of drishti, divya drishti, it becomes Brahman. So uparati is first withdrawing from all these vessels that I've poured myself into. Okay. And the last, then the next one is Endurance of all afflictions without countering aids and without anxiety or lament is said to be titiksha. Countering aids means you can take a herb, you if you are hungry you can take food but it should not feel like SOS for you. Then say you don't have it you will fall apart. For some people even I am there countering it. There are people who text me to say, just give me a blank text, I'll be fine. <laughs> now I'm just sitting here to be everybody's crutch, you know, come. Those are the people I never text back. May you fall. It will be good, it will wake up time. <laughs> say that teacher is Mithya, not there when you really need, huh? Okay. Hmm. Now finally, <laughs> Shraddha. Shastra se Guru Vakya se Satya Buddha, Satya Buddha ya Avadharana. Assignment of the scripture and of the words of the Guru with conviction about their truth is called Shraddha by the good and as that by which knowledge of reality is obtained. So it is the way that which uh, the knowledge is obtained. And the final one is Samadhana. Samyagya sthapanam buddhahi shuddhe brahmani sarvada tat samadhanam ityuptam natu chittasya lalanam The perfect establishment of the buddhi in the brahman, in this concept of atman, who am I? I am not this, what I see is said to be samadhana and it is quite different from the indulgence of the mind where it becomes full of I am old, I am poor, I am afflicted, I am miserable, I am helpless. I may be experiencing all of these things but who am I? I am different. 
And before, first we have to understand who I am not. And this is the process of Viveka. I hope this is helping you. Okay, Jai Ma.